In making bio shoes, the most beautiful detail is the neckline. But you, as a beginner in shoemaking, do it wrong. So today, in this shoemaking tutorial, I will teach you a pro tip how to make this beautiful neckline. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button to be notified when my new video will come out. So let's get started. Learn how to make shoes with my step-by-step -step video courses. So usually when we make pattern for flat bodied shoes, ballerina shoes, sling back pumps or any other pump type, we have the difference between outer side and inner side in the throat line of the pattern. You see the throat line, the top line of the outer side of the pattern is lower than the throat line of the inner side of this pattern. And this is the main reason why almost every beginner has problem with making this pattern. Because the neckline is asymmetrical, but it must look like symmetrical, okay? And in most of the cases, in the works of my students, beginners' works, I see that the neckline looks not even, non-symmetrically. And that's why today in this making tutorial, I will show you a short tip that I also teach in my courses, how to make this neckline of ballerina shoes look symmetrically with beautiful throat line. So this approach uh, includes two important moments. The first one will be in pattern making and second one will be in lasting. But I will show it very briefly because this is shoemaking tutorial for YouTube. In my courses, I explain it very detailed. Okay, so what is the approach in pattern making? Right now, we will make our basic pattern of flat body shoes with symmetrical throat line, meaning that the, there will be now no difference between outer side and inner side in the neckline, in the throat line. Okay, but remember that this approach is valuable only for making flat body shoes with the low heels. So for the shoe last uh, with the heel height up to 1.5 centimeters, not more. So we start to copy this basic pattern and I will copy only outer side of this pattern, the outer side of the throat line. You should have cardboard to copy this pattern to the new piece of cardboard to have this pattern. And we will make here the center line, the center line of my old pattern must match the center line on the new pattern. Now we will copy this throughout line. And here we will copy also the edge of the pattern with lasting allowance that must be on the inner side of this pattern. Okay? Here I doesn't uh, I didn't copy the back line because I will copy the entire pattern when I will bend this pattern. So to bend this pattern, to bend this cardboard, we will need to score this cardboard along central line. And right now I will cut this pattern, this cardboard, only in the throat line and back line, okay? Check well that you cut your cardboard through the end. open it and we have beautiful very beautiful throat line but 
Now I need to add this extra, extra material that I have on the inner side of the pattern. I need to add it to the elastic allowance because if I will not add this extra, it will be very short here on the inner side of the last and I will not have enough uh, elastic allowance. Approximately it's 5-6 millimeters on this area where we have the difference between outer side and inner side. You can do it by eyes or measure it and we will have here this difference. Why? Because we created here symmetrical throat line, but we will still we will have this difference between outer and inner side, and you will see it during clasping. Now we can cut the entire pattern. Don't forget to have this mark of the inner side. And right now I will copy to the paper pattern to place it on the shoe last in the way how you should place it during lasting. So I made a copy of this basic pattern from paper and placed it on the shoe last. This is how we usually need to work to check the correctness of our basic pattern before we move on to create upper and lining pattern. Okay? So usually when we make a pattern with asymmetrical throat line where we have the difference between outer side and inner side we should place our pattern when we check it when we last it in the way where the center line of the pattern of the upper match the center line of the shoe last. but using this approach we will not follow this rule because right now we should place it differently we have symmetrical throat line but we still need to have difference between outer side and inner side because our inner side is higher and if you will make it lower than it must be you will see it on your feet you will have not pretty shoes you you have ugly shoes okay what we should do is we should place our paper pattern or upper pattern in the way where it is lays not along the center line but closer to the outer side to create this difference between outer side and inner side okay so you need to move it a little bit on five four millimeters toward the outer side to uh, create this visual effect and it's not only visual it will be a real difference between outer side and inner side but the approach here is that you have symmetrical throat line but you should place it asymmetrically on the shoe last okay so you should place it by eyes to see that your throat line on the inner side higher than the throat line on the outer side okay and this how we uh, also will check if we have here enough lasting allowance maybe the um, six millimeters that I added here it's not enough okay so let's do it just place it not pull don't pull it too much to not ruin your paper pattern you should work with uh, masking tape or with nails You see where is the central line and I before I close this pattern I need to be sure that I place it correctly and I check it looking on the throat line from this point of view to see that here the um, distance here is not lower than the distance here and actually higher. You can measure it with, me with the shoemaker tape. And I think if I place it like, right, like this, it's okay. So I need to close it, to pull here more, and to see if I have enough lasting allowance here, for example, if I will copy this line, 
of lasting allowance I you can see that I have here not enough here it's enough and maybe I need to cut here a little bit okay but here it's not enough you see it must be um, approximately 12 millimeters from the edge of the shoe last okay I don't move on I don't uh, attach it correctly uh, to see how it lays on the shoe last I know how it will lay but the main steps I showed you so place it in the way where central line lays uh, um, closer to the outer side and see after you will place it correctly check if you have here lasting allowance, enough lasting allowance, and maybe you need to add extra, like I need to add here in my pattern, so I will take it off from the shoe last and will add here extra millimeters because I see that here is not enough. So this not enough millimeters, two three millimeters, I will add here on the on my basic pattern okay this is how we usually work when we create pattern we should check it with paper pattern and all mistakes that we see in the paper pattern we need to correct them and make correct basic pattern without any mistakes okay this is it this is the approach on how you can create beautiful throat line of your ballerina shoes because one of the most beautiful things in ballerina shoes is the throat line okay and right now you know how to do it that's it if you have any questions you're welcome to comment below this video now you have an insole that doesn't match the shoeless that you have bad situation but you can fix it if you want to know how let me know in the comments below this video. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button to be notified when my new video will come out. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.